I've, I've always integrated sort of different media that was available at the time. Um, with this particular piece, it was a mixture of knowing that we wanted to make a piece about this particular subject, and that was definitely going to involve media, and knowing that we wanted to do certain things with media. And then at the same time, actually going into the studio and just experimenting with the media itself and with tools that, some tools that we knew and some tools that were very new to us. Mm -hmm. And through the process of actually just getting in the room, live in the room, with the actual technology and experimenting with it, some of the material actually came out of our organic response to that process. Wow. Thanks. One more question or comment? Okay. I think we can move on. Yeah. David Salaza. Hi. So, uh, just to frame where I come from a little bit, um, I started as a performer, my career and interest as a performer. First as an actor, um, I was in New York uh, and uh, came from a really small town. I'll start in the beginning for you guys. Um, <laughs> I know, that's all right. Um, so anyway, got into performance and sort of my mind bent once I moved to New York that there's this whole thing called dance. I had no idea what contemporary dance was, where I came from. I'm like, okay, and I sort of got into that. And then, um, as most people do in New York, I was broke and uh, was waiting tables. But then a friend of mine said, hey, you want to hang a light? And I'm like, okay. And I hang a light. And I got into technical theater. And one thing led to another. And I, I became a designer um, and started doing it full time and touring with other people and got really into first lighting design because uh, I was working for dance. and. Everybody needed a lighting designer, and then uh, that started moving into more media design because it was the cool thing to do in the late '90s, and um, and it sort of went from there. And uh, so I worked for many years as a designer up until, um, but sort of latent in the back of my head um, was starting to craft pieces of my own as well. And uh, in 2006. Um, I made a piece called Gadget I worked on for eight years, um, and I moved to the Bay somewhere in there, and I'm going to show a little bit of that. Um, and it was about um, the making of the atomic bomb. Um, I've been interviewing people who uh, worked on the Manhattan Project, who are still alive. They're all in their 70s, 80s, 90s. And I was recording their stories as sort of oral histories, not really sure what I was going to do, um, and knew it had some sort of performance thing in it, but it was really strange to me. So uh, I made this piece. Um, I'm going to play it while I talk about it because it'll make a little more sense. Thank you. So uh, it was an environmental theater piece. Um, you walked in to the space as an audience member and there were these plexiglass domes hanging over you. Uh, and they each had a personality of uh, somebody who was part of the Manhattan Project, and you could listen to their stories. Also, 270 degrees around you is a film playing about the uh, lead up to the development of the bomb and why it happened, and the people who were involved with it talking about their experiences. So I'm really, uh, to talk back to Mary's point, I'm interested in using media to bring something into the room that wouldn't otherwise be possible. And that's a big part about what this is, but also to then um, make it tell a story in a way which we couldn't tell a story if we didn't have that tool. So that's what starts happening. So this goes on for like 20 minutes, half an hour. You're learning about the Manhattan Project. You're hearing people tell stories. You could hit play there. That'd be awesome. And uh, at some point, I think things start going wrong. And um, there's this guy in the audience who's actually a plant, who's a performer, and he starts acting out. And the bomb blows up. And from here on, um, myself on DVD turntables and a DJ start remixing 
movies about the making of atomic bomb and uh, with news clips of people. Um, we sort of started chronologically and plowed right up until the present day um, and started folding back in commentary about this experience and the sort of barrage of information that uh, that we've had to deal with sort of post Nuke. Uh, fast forward a little more. That's uh, Robbie Oppenheimer. Basically saying we could all die. Um, right, so here's me. That's me. And that's the video on the wall. And, um, Why don't we seek negotiations for a freeze now and carry on to reductions? That way we can halt the making of doomsday weapons and save billions to help poor people. people, poor people. Helen, I know that there are people that have tried to, they now tried to, they now tried to, now tried to, they now tried to. Figure that you think you that you you this this out. The truth of the matter is that on balance, I have not on balance, I have not on balance, I have been 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 on balance. The Soviet Union does have a depth, margin, 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 So that was Ronnie, you know, and we're mixing in Red Dawn here, great Cold War movie, Patrick Swayze, Wolverines, and uh, you know, it's pretty loud in the theater, and we're creating this sort of like party environment mixed with pretty aggressive material. That's DJ Excess, he's a world champion scratch DJ. That's Sherwood Chen, who is planted in the audience, and he's like um, choreographed by Sarah Shelf Men, and he's, uh, you'll see a little bit more of him here, but he's getting sweaty with him. So I'm really interested in intimacy as a performer. I'm really interested in um, uh, telling a story. And I'm really interested in um, uh, future aesthetics, should we say, right? Like what do we have available to us? What's going on? What's interesting? And so I want to make a piece that takes a moment in history that's pretty well pushed back and like we don't really know what to do with that information anymore and, and bring it really into the present and have people deal with those issues um, like in a really like face-to-face -face kind of way. So we've got, you know, there's Sherwood bumping into Barksdale, you know, sort of um, making it happen. And uh, Terminator 3 is playing, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is screwing on his head. And it's like, what, um, did anybody see this? I know Zach saw it, a couple of people. Sweet. So I'm out of time, but, um, but it's, you know, there it is, that's what I did once. And, uh, <laughs> There's Arnie, check him out, man. The budget. The budget.